Team Biden is calling it one of the greatest political comebacks. And make no mistake about it, this campaign that will send Donald Trump packing. This campaign is taking off. Join us. In a turning point in the Democratic presidential race, the former vice president surged into the lead early in the night. He won primary elections in the key states of Texas, Virginia, Alabama, Arkansas, North Carolina, Oklahoma and Tennessee. Our campaign reflects the diversity of this party and this nation. And that's how it should be, because we need to bring everybody along. Joe Biden benefited from fellow moderates dropping out of the race. Senator Amy Klobuchar decided not to contest her home state. Her endorsement of Barack Obama's former right-hand man was a decisive factor in him winning Minnesota. Here in California, Bernie Sanders has claimed the largest state in the country, running on an agenda of Medicare for all, wiping out $2.2 trillion of student debt and also putting environment as a priority with the Green New Deal. Bernie has got progressives on board here in Los Angeles. He just needs others to jump on board if he's to stay alive in the race. After falling behind in the delegate count, Sanders went on the offensive, attacking his opponent's track record. One of us in this race led the opposition to the war in Iraq. You're looking at him. Another candidate voted for the war in Iraq. There were several keys to Biden's success. He has big support among voters aged 65 and over, and he's the front runner among African Americans. But his greatest strength might be that Democrats believe he's the candidate who's most likely to beat Donald Trump on November 3. Duncan McKenzie McCarg, TRT World, Los Angeles. Well, for more on this, Jeffrey Tucker joins us live now from Great Barrington in Massachusetts. He's the editorial director at the American Institute for Economic Research. Good to have you back on again, Jeffrey. Now, it only seems like yesterday that you and I were talking about uh, Bloomberg's surge in the polls and now he's bowed out of the race. Was his half a billion dollar spend on the campaign worth it? What did he achieve? He achieved absolutely nothing except a grave Im a personal and professional embarrassment. A half a million dollars? Imagine all the investment that could have been, all the jobs. I mean, what what you and I might have been able to do with half a billion dollars is kind of awesome. Or, or a smart investor like Bloomberg is. His campaign was a disaster. I have no idea who he was relying on, but I don't know who told him to run to the left of Bernie Sanders and to not ever explain to the voters in who he is or what he wanted to do or ever develop a theme. He just ran ad after ad after ad thinking, believing somehow that if he spent enough money, he could, he could actually buy the nomination. Well, we learned, didn't we, uh, yesterday that you can't do that. So all this talk about fear of money in politics turns out to be really amounts to absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. No, but also, Joe, it's very interesting. Go ahead. No, I was just going to move on to Joe Biden because he is officially the comeback kid, isn't he? He's now the front runner once again in this Democratic race. What explains his thumping victory on Super Tuesday? <laughs> Oscar, I'm, I'm afraid he wants to talk about it as this mighty comeback. That's a lot of drama. What you have is Democrats acquiescing. They're like, yeah, he's not so hot. But he seems like uh, the best thing we've we've got. Well, at, at this point, I think they're trying to minimize losses for the next election. I'm sorry to say it, but they're they're looking to not be absolutely humiliated. And Biden seems the person most likely to minimize the disgrace that uh, that they're uh, that they're going to be greeted with. And I say this not you know, out of personal opinions or anything. I'm just looking at the betting odds right now uh, are giving uh, Biden an 80% 80 chance to win the Democratic nomination, but very, very low odds to actually winning the general election. Trump is the overwhelming favorite. So, you know, if 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 Sanders had received the nomination, it, it, it not only would have branded, branded the Democratic Party as, as basically America's Communist Party for the next 20 years, but it would have discredited the progressive left in this country for, for a couple of generations, which, you know, may, maybe some people like that idea, but I think many establishment Democrats are a little concerned about that. So Biden will minimize the damage, I think, and, and that's what this is all about. I'm not really really sure that Biden himself is attracting all that much uh, energy and excitement. It's more like, 
you know, who who can we put out there uh, to not make us look just absolutely terrible? So how much, uh, what was behind this Super Tuesday result? I mean, how much of it had to do with a backlash against Bernie Sanders' uh, socialist economic agenda? Oh, I think a lot of it did. Yeah, I think you're right. So, so in the last debate, uh, you know, uh, Sanders, you know, is, is promoting, you know, C Cuba's uh, social and educational policy, which... You know, it just shows what a tenure he has. You know, what a what a, crab, a crabby old uh, old Menjevic he really is to th to think that you can say to the American voters that that America should be more like Cuba. I'm sorry, that is just not very smart uh, campaigning. So yeah, there was some degree of worry that it was fun for a while to get behind this guy and that's sort of inter you know interesting and, yes. and progressive and and hip but it just didn't last and i think there was a last minute panic that's why you had everybody dropping out right before super tuesday so they can coalesce around one guy mm. who at least has uh, some chance of not completely discrediting the party in the general election well it isn't the end of the race as we know jeffrey tucker in massachusetts thank you as always